Good evening and thank you for joining us today. I am Amit Saxena and Dr. Deepika Chavra from Medical Services Department of Jackson Paul Pharmaceuticals would like to extend a warm welcome to all those who have joined this webinar. Expert speaks promoting a healthy, happy pregnancy, accredited with two ICOG points, organized under the ages of West UP chapter of ISOPOP with Harper Ops and Gynae Society and academic partner, Jackson Power Pharmaceuticals Limited. Jackson Power are delighted to present DivaGest, our range of natural micronized progesterone, DivaGest 200 SR, DivaGest 300 SR, DivaGest 200 soft gel and DivaGest 100 injections. Jackson Power would like to express gratitude and express, uh, extend a warm welcome to those who have joined and experts and attendees. Today's program coordinator are Dr. Arjuna Verma, ma'am, President, West UP Chapter of ISOPAP, Vice President 2021-22 FOXY, and Dr. Neeta Sharma, ma'am, President Harpur Ops and Gynae Society. Now I request Dr. Neeta Sharma, ma'am, to kindly initiate this session. Thank you so much, dear Amit and Jackson Park Pharma. Good afternoon, respected seniors, my dear colleagues, and friends. Today we have gathered here on this platform to be a part of intellectual session filled with desire, hopes, and dreams to learn and share. ISOPAR was born in Patna to generate the message of peace and happiness in this land for mother, child, and to the whole family. I, Dr. Nita Sharma, President Hapur of Sangaini Society, have proud privilege and immense pleasure to welcome you all. A galaxy of stalwarts. Past President I Super Dr. Gangadhar Sahu, President Dr. Arup Kumar Maji, Secretary General Dr. Pregya Mishra Chaudhary, President West UP Chapter I Super Dr. Archana Verma, Secretary Dr. Archana Sharma, Dr. Seema Vashne, Dr. Shaila Jamal, Dr. Niharika Malhutra. Joint Secretary Dr. Renu Bansal, Editor Dr. Apurva Sana, and Hawk Secretary Dr. Deepshika Goyal, Prisoner Dr. Renu Bansal. Honorable Chief Guest Dr. Amita Suneza, President AOGD, Guest of Honor Dr. Lakshmi Shri Khande, Chairperson ICUG, Guest of Honor Dr. Kiran Pandey, Chairperson Medical Education Committee, Foxy. On behalf of the West UP chapter, ISOPAR with Hapur and Hapur Option Gaini Society. I welcome you all. Experts will speak about promoting a happy, healthy pregnancy. Life's biggest miracle is the gift of having life growing inside you, and that's incredible. It's not always easy to deal with growing little life inside you. The morning sickness, the hormones, the changes of your body, the sleeplessness. However, you have to learn to fight the pregnancy blues. Yet, when it all gets too high, just remember how powerful you really are to bear this pregnancy. Babies are exposed to everything you eat during pregnancy. For that, eat breakfast every day, eat food high in fiber, and drink fluids particularly water, to avoid constipation. Avoid alcohol, raw or undercooked fish, fish high in mercury, undercooked meat and poultry, and soft cheeses. Do moderate in intensity aerobic activity at least 150 minutes a week during your pregnancy. Happy life, happiness life within your own self. As you gear up for the oncoming labor and childbirth, your family and friends are there to support you. A positive attitude is a key for happy and healthy pregnancy outcome. Dr. Archana Verma, she is moderator with me and this program has been designed by her. She is founder president of Best UP ISOPAR chapter she is passionate about creating awareness on women's health. She is associated with so many prestigious society and decorated with so many awards. 
she is an incredible leader who exhibits humility and empowers empowers others stay authentic and are always consistent thank you for being such a charismatic leader ma'am we always wish to work under your worthy guidance so awesome. such a nice word we have many eminent speakers for this session now i warm welcome our chief guest dr amita suneja she is director professor and head of department of obstetric and gynecology university college of medical sciences and guru tegh bahadur hospital delhi india her field of interest are gynecology oncology urogynecology and adolescent gynecology her position uh, held are president aogd chairperson on policy committee president rt delhi editor aogd uh, there are so many achievements to her name who fellowship in gynecology oncology best doctor award teacher of teacher award award of excellence in adolescent health and so many publications and guest lectures edited three books welcome ma'am now i extend a warm welcome to our guest of honor dr lakshmi shrikhandu she is chairperson icog indian college of obgyn national corresponding editor journal obgy india jogi National Corresponding Secretary Association of Medical Women India, founder, patron, and president ISOPERS Vidharva Chapter 2019 and 21, chairperson IMS Education Committee, president Association of Medical Women Nagpur, and she is medical director of Shri Khandey Fertility Clinic, Nagpur, Maharashtra. She is decorated with so many awards. She received. Bharat Ratan Award received Bharat Excellence Award received Nehru Dhara Han Sotia Best Committee Award received appreciation letter from Maharashtra government senior vice president she is former senior vice president former president Meena Post Society president Nagpur delivered 11 orations and 450 guest lectures publication 30 national and 11 international she sensitized 2 lakh boys and girls on adolescent health issues you are welcome ma'am next i extend a warm welcome to our own dynamic guest of honor dr kiran pandey now she is chairperson of medical education committee foxy uh, she is Professor and ex HOD Department of Austin Gynae GSVM Medical College, Kanpur. ICOG Governing Council Member, Chairperson IMAWD, Vice President UPCOG, Vice President UPAGOI, Past President Kanpur of Gynae Society and IMA, President Kanpur Menopause Society. She has great working experience and has received. a new global award and involved in many research activities 75 national and state level and 10 district level awards and more than 40 awards by ima and rotary club foxy achiever award district president appreciation award health committee and foxy champion at aciug received best teacher award district kanpur ratan award you are welcome ma'am we also have professor arup kumar maji due to some mishap in her fam in his family uh, he is not able to join today i extend my warm welcome to secretary general isopar dr pragya mishra choudhary she is consultant in infertility specialist with a special interest in fetal medicine She is past chairperson genetic and fetal medicine committee, Foxy, secretary general I Super, secretary and founder secretary Bihar chapter of ISA, uh, former vice president Patna and of Gynae Society, former secretary Patna of Gynae Society, in part Foxy certified 
colposcopy training examiner for mrcg clinical examination she is decorated with so many awards awarded asia gcc award healthcare professional of the year 2018 awarded the george mahoney award uh, cl javeri award dr j mishra gold medal award awarded with dr m p john gold medal contributed chapters in 10 books and papers in national journals organizing secretary of coxi uh, spark demcon organizing secretary of 24th box in 20 2040 scientific chairperson isofar annual conference patna 2016 ma'am you are welcome here it's gratifying to look around and see so many familiar faces it is indeed going to be a great session it's indeed a great pleasure and pride to be here as part of this webinar which is uh, on uh, promoting happy and healthy pregnancy being organized by the west up branch of isofa and uh, hapur of gyni society and um, i extend my gratitude to the organizing team dr archana verma the president of uh, west up chapter of isopa and uh, dr neeta the president of hapur obigyan society then the president isopa dr maji whom i know very well and uh, he could not be here today and uh, secretary general dr pragya mishra i also extend my warm uh, regards to the guest of honor dr lakshmi chirikande and uh, who's chairperson icog and dr kiran pandey uh, from kanpur who is uh, well known and uh, she is a coxi chairperson for medical education um, society and uh, you know the topic of webinar is very interesting promoting happy and uh, healthy pregnancy pregnancy can be happy if it is healthy it can be healthy if there is a optimal outcome of fetus and mother and uh, i was going through the scientific program which has been crafted so well and we can have only have healthy pregnancy only if we give evidence based care to the mother and mother looks after her and uh, so many changes there have been paradigm uh, shifts in the antenatal care now the whole focus is on the first trimester and if you see the in first trimester we screen for the aneuploidies we detect 40% of the congenital anomalies can be detected in the first trimester and uh, we can predict medical disorders preeclampsia we can predict fgr and uh, um, you know macrosomia still births by the screening in the first trimester so i as uh, the last i think session is on the antenatal care inverting the paradigm and uh, there are many conditions when there is a need for a progesterone because if we do not detect that early in time we do not treat then it will have a worse per perinatal outcome or can land up in the portions also so the role of micronized natural progesterone is being highlighted by the renowned uh, faculty and uh, the oration by dr ramnath you know the, it's so interesting and i am also curious to know what is going to speak they went to say no and whom to say no so this interesting program and i am sure the delegates are going to be enriched by it and they'll enjoy the cme i wish all of you a great success and thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here thank you so much thank you ma'am for your kind words uh deepika please show appreciation award to felicitate chief guest uh myself and dr archana verma present it to you ma'am dr amita suneja thank you very much thank you thank you such a nice gesture thank you so much well appreciated thank you it's a very unique one <laughs> thank you uh now i request to our guest of honor dr lakshmi shri khande ma'am please bless her i think dr lakshmi was uh, saying that she'll be late uh, so now into ask dr kiran ma'am uh now i request uh, our guest of honor dr kiran pandey ma'am please bless uh, by saying few words of blessing thank you 
thank you so much dr neeta for very kind words and uh, for the taking care of personally uh, even uh, reminding and for the webinar and taking personal interest that's really great of the organizers hapur uh, society has taken lots of pain and i'm very thankful to dr arjuna our dear dear sweet friend she's always so sweet and caring that uh, it gives i mean no one can say no to her at any time and i really missed you at kanpur conference uh, at the outset i am very thankful to uh, west chapter of isopap and hapur society for giving me this honor of uh, Uh, sharing the uh, dais with uh, our doctor amita chief guest doctor lakshmi is not there otherwise it's i matlab whenever she'll join my regards to her uh, it's a very wonderfully selected topic and everyone is now focusing and that's our i mean the for obstetrician what better can be the uh, result or the outcome or the award if the mother and health to give the healthy mother and child so the all all the time we are actually focusing uh, earlier also we were focusing but now especially that happy part has also been included into that healthy part about which and for that it is uh, this topic which you have selected as dr amita was saying are very carefully planned program hell this inverted uh, the triangle which is uh, i mean the youngsters have to understand is become very important even now our, our public which usually thinks that the first trimester trimester a patient is not having even the the, the sasu ma and the mother and they think abhi to koi problem nahi hai kya dikhana hai so this is very important to them creating this our awareness in the first trimester is the crux because the seed is of anything is sown there and if we are able to take care nurture it to give it the proper nutrition in the water and the supply that will bloom into the really good uh, outcome it will give them you into the healthy happy uh, outcome of the pregnancy so that's very important progesterone has been one of the things which from ages we have been reading and we know its role can can i mean uh, day by day it is increasing only and dr sampat our vice president is very i mean such as learned person and she is my mentor also <laughs> so i know what whatever she'll say she'll definitely guide us a lot but really one more that the aspect which you have selected i think that is very i'm very curious even just like dr amita that uh, and that is a fact also doctors are person who never who are never able to say no we might uh, say many things when we are not seeing the patient at that time say we should do this we should do that and we should take only this and that but when the situation comes to us or when there is some i think so some emergency patient comes so some tricky patient comes or someone is in critical problem then everyone forgets to say no and we might lend up into the situations which unwanted situations probably that is what i think so is the thing which is very important to learn so this uh, mm, uh, i mean all the eminent speakers are here the important the learned the chair person sir there i welcome you all on behalf of the hapur society and uh, Dr. Arjuna West Chapter President, um, I would say Arjuna again that you are very. It's nice and kind of you to invite me, and I would always welcome you also everywhere. And um, my de- delegates will, and myself also. Not only the delegates, we also are always in the learning process and learn few important. Uh, guidelines and the key points given by the speaker, eminent speakers. 
सो थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू वेरी मच डॉक्टर नीता and the organizers the general secretary of uh, dr pragya i think she is not there i'm there i'm there she is you are there you are there <laughs> so thank okay. you pragya i hope you are keeping well last time when we talked you was little and well something so i always it's really nice to see you hi hail and hearty and fresh looking uh, ready to do <laughs> do so many things so um, thank you very much all the organizers i'm really proud uh, honored thank, thank, thank you, you dr chiran you are most uh, wonderful and precious gem for us not only guest you are our family i am not guest actually i am part of you i am part yeah of you are our family and most important is that i you are my friend <laughs> thank you very much so please accept this uh, small token of love from neeta and uh, all our west up and all organizing team we are highly thankful to you dr kiran thank you thank you such a lovely guest thank you very much thank you uh, now i request our uh, secretary general i super uh, dr pragya mishra choudhary ma'am please say a few words of last year Good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon to all of you, and uh, thank you, Dr. Nita Sharma, for a very kind introduction. Uh, so it is very nice. First, at the outset, I would like to congratulate uh, Dr. Archana Verma, who is the president of West UP chapter, for uh, taking the initiative to organize this uh, program of ISUPAB along with the uh, Hapur uh, Obs and Kani Society, and. Um, and i can our chief guest dr amita <laughs> sunija and guest of honor dr kiran pande and uh, dr uh, lakshmi shrikande in absentia so first of all i would say that i feel very nostalgic when i see dr archana verma and dr sampat kumari because you know we were all in the foxy chair persons in the same tenure so you know we have attended so many uh, managing committee meetings together so many foxy program taken selfies together and dr archana verma well she is just uh, uh, well really renowned for her uh, you know, friendly nature and you know she's quite popular we all know that so thank you dr archana for having involved me for this program i can see our immediate past president dr kandadhar sahu who has done so much good work you know in the last 12 months i mean it's uh, it's an unbelievable you know in 12 months 11 new chapters of isopap so it was a record breaking tenure i must say and i think ever since isopap was formed i don't think you know we have had so many new chapter formation in one single year so in a, so that was absolutely amazing now as um, a secretary general of isopap But, well, first of all, West UP is becoming very active uh, in ISOPAP. They have so many members, um, exactly. But I mean, they have over a hundred members, you know, at present. So that's really. But you know, we have to keep up the good work, which you know, Dr. Sahu initiated in uh, taking ISOPAP to the doorstep. You know, it's actually it has a, such a deep meaning, uh, which means that you know the good work of ISOPAP. has to be taken to every nook and corner of the country so that you know our mothers and uh, babies and uh, um, the unborn babies and the neonates would be benefited you know from our good work and isopab is the only professional organization in the country which is um, uh, dedicated to both perinatology and reproductive biology so as the, the secretary general you know i would at present i would just appeal everyone that you know we are membership strength is increasing but you know the people of course if you are coming through a city chapter then well and fine but you know like individual members who are actually becoming members through isopap i would request them that you know in an email to isopap please send your transaction detail along with your isopap membership form and your uh, post graduate degree or diploma certificate because what is happening that people are doing an nefp on an individual basis their reference you know the name is not mentioned and you know and isopap doesn't know where where from that you know money has come 
from which um, doctor, from which member. So it's becoming so uh, difficult for ISOPAB. Some 25, 30 names we have, 25, 30 transactions where, you know, we cannot allot the membership number. So, you know, whoever, all the people who have logged in, you know, the faculty and the delegates, please inform your and you people are already members of ISOPAB. But people who are going to become new members, I mean, it's a very small thing to do, you know, when you're making, when you're paid the money, you send the transaction detail along with an email um, with the form. Because if you do an NEFT today and if you send uh, one email after one month or two months, it gets so difficult, you know. So it has to be done together in the same way. So please try to make that thing easy for ISOPAP. That's one thing and it's really, really, uh, as the Secretary General, I am facing a lot of problems because there is a backlog from the time even when I was not the Secretary General. So many um, transactions but without any membership um, number or names allotted. And of course, people who want to download their membership certificate, we have circulated so many times the link. You can always log on to that link. You can change your, edit your, um, uh, you know, uh, contact details, etc. And, uh, and, uh, and, and yeah, it will be very good if you give it this, make it and a WhatsApp message, and we will uh, uh, also try to tell all our members, whoever known to us, so that this thing goes into uh, at the first priority. We have done yeah, it yes. many. We have done it many times, you know. So I thought, you know, every time, okay, that's fine. But uh, it's done it many times, but still, there are so many pending. Uh, um, I mean, uh, numbers to be allotted, membership numbers, because of lack of that uh, reference. So thank you so much for uh, making me a part of this uh, um, uh, webinar, um, along with uh, um, uh, Hapur chapter of uh, Hapur Ops and Gaini Society. Thank you so much. And the two moderators, of course, we all know, Dr. Archana Varma, Dr. Nita Sharma, and hello to Dr. Sampat Kumari and um, all the faculty members. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for kind of. Uh, Deepika, please show appreciation of us for Dr. Pragya Mishra Chaudhary, ma'am. From Pregnant, my side. Please, uh, Pregnant, uh, from Pregnant, please uh, accept this small token from Dr. Nita and Dr. All Harper Society and West UP chapter. Thank you so much. That's a very uh, kind gesture on your part and a very friendly gesture. Thank you Nita so has Nita and Deepika has worked very hard for this. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I say indeed going to going to be a great session. Now, without much delay, I start the session one. Uh, topic is natural micronized progesterone in early pregnancy, and our eminent speaker is Dr. S. Sampatumari, Vice President Fox. Progesterone is available as natural progesterone and synthetic progesterone. The natural progesterone is obtained from soya bean and Mexican yam fruit, and it shows the same chemical structure as that of physiological progesterone found in human body. Micronization of the natural progesterone increases the half-life of progesterone with the metabolites, including allopregnanol, showing indirect stimulatory effect on uh, progesterone receptor. Micronization decreases particle size and enhances the dissolution of progesterone. Absorption of micronized progesterone is enhanced twofold when the hormone is taken with food. Uh, the chairperson for this session are Dr. Archana Sharma Men and Dr. Apurva Sthana. Dr. Archana Sharma, she is consultant IVF and laparoscopic surgeon. Scientific and Clinical Director, Ganesh Hospital and Test Tube Baby uh, Center, Ghaziabad. Having the privilege of starting first Test Tube Baby Center in Ghaziabad, she is associated with so many refugee societies. North Zone Coordinator of Food and Drug Medical Surgical Equipment Committee, Prisoner and Founder Member, ISOPA West UP Chapter, got the privilege of producing first IVF, EC, and IVF twin babies in Ghaziabad, presenting several papers, presentation in several national conferences and participated as in many conferences and workshops, recipient of so many awards and her field of interest is fertility enhancing laparoscopic surgery, 
ultrasound and art our second uh, chairperson is dr apurva sana she is director phonics healthcare greater noida ex consultant lex health care greater noida uh, trezra society of menstrual disorder and hygiene management editor up west i super and the youth mentor award at uh, youthcon award for most promise, promising upcoming gynecologist greater noida and her special interest is in high risk pregnancy and infertility dr archana uh, sharma ma'am please introduce our speaker thank you very much for this opportunity and it's really my proud privilege to introduce our wonderful orator dr lovely dr s sampath kumari madam um, everybody you, knows her that yes, she is the yes. vice right vice president foxy uh, nowadays and uh, she is the chief muthu muthu kumran medical college no research problem. thank you thank you and former secretary and lot of awards to her credit like i am a doctors day award foxy dr durusha distinguished committee award foxy uh, mr any pandit shelija pandit women empowerment award then karmveer chakra 15 national award for adolescent activities and she is the chairperson of foxy adolescent health committee in 2016 to 2018 president board of study icg governing council member 2015 to 2020 and now right now she is the honorary vice president foxy uh, in this current year welcome you madam and we are eager to hear from you wonderful uh, topic you are going to take thank you thank madam you. thank you madam for the nice words uh, thank you ma'am good afternoon to all first of all i thank dr archana and uh, dr neeta for giving me the wonderful opportunity to address the west up isopa with the napur society such a wonderful uh, meeting you have organized once again a special thanks to dr archana she was uh, we both were working as a committee chair and uh, as already mentioned we used to take selfies and everything so so wishing all the best for archana for everything in future now while my topic given to me is natural micronized progesterone in early pregnancy see now uh, sorry for uh, asking you people to present because i have been held up in a physical meeting with itc so i asked uh, the to present uh, see the natural some line is coming what is that live transcription closed has been enabled who can one minute yes see the progesterone as all of us know it is a synthetic and natural micronized now neeta madam has given a full what is progesterone and how the micronized progesterone the effect everything so the natural micronized progesterone is always nowadays very well used see the men progesterone is an essential hormone as all of us know it is most important in the reproductive cycle as so with the 28 days with the proliferative base phase being on the secretory phase and the luteal phase the progesterone is very very important for the menstrual cycle to continue and even for the implantations to be continued next the progesterone as all of us know it secrete by the ovaries placenta adrenal glands and is essential mainly during the luteal phase to sustain the pregnancy this is the normal physiology of the mechanism which we know that the follicular phase and the luteal phase where we want to identify most of the time we are not doing the serum progesterone level to identify that it is the luteal phase deficiency so it is also not sensitive it is also not released so for the luteal phase deficiency in that cases also we go with the progesterone sir this progesterone natural micronized progesterone is uh, we know that there are different types of the roots are present oral root is present vaginal root is present rectal also but nowadays we have the injections and the sustained release is also nowadays available so totally the progesterone whatever may be the form it is very very essential for the best uh, uh, the luteal phase uh, deficiency to correct and for the implantation and then the, to continue the pregnancy next slide so in the early pregnancy what happens with the once after the first ovulation the progesterone is secreted by the corpus luteum 
if the pregnancy is not produced with the progesterone levels fall and the menstrual bleeding occurs if the fertilization occurs what we are doing the hcg produced is also increasing with continuing productions of the progesterone to maintain the pregnancy whatever it is needed the progesterone has to be maintained normally it is secreted if it is not sufficient we are going to give the uh, um orally or vaginally the progesterone that has to be continued up to 20 weeks sometimes now it takes goes till to the late pregnancy now we are dealing only with the early pregnancy so in the case of the early pregnancy progesterone is must next slide see as i told the progesterone first what we do for the implantation and in the early pregnancy it provides the nutrition and enables the development of the fetus for the development of the fetus it is needed so the corpus luteum secretes the progesterone once it is developed and it is for the maintenance and suppresses the uterine contraction see sometimes if in the early pregnancy if the contraction is present they may end up in the miscarriage so this progesterone is also needed to suppress the uterine contractions and it is the immune response so we, for example in a case of the recurrent miscarriage repeated uh, uh, abortions cases in that cases for the immunity it modulates the immune response to To prevent the rejections of the embryo, so the tropoblasts of the implanted embryo produce HCG, which maintains the corpus luteum, that to produce the progesterone. So first the corpus luteum, and then the luteal phase defect from the corpus luteum to the placenta. That is the shift where it happens from where at the, around the 11 to 12, the placenta is also starts secreting. But till the 20 weeks, the placenta, the progesterone is much much needed. Next slide. this is the luteal placental shift which is the luteal placental shift normally happens at the 8 to 9 or 7 to 9 weeks of the pregnancy in which case the progesterone secretion is shifted from the corpus luteum to the placenta so in the earlier stages the progesterone is produced by the corpus luteum and in the later with the placenta which is very very needed if the amount secreted is not sufficient then only we go for the thing that the case of luteal phase deficiency in that cases we go with the uh, progesterone which can be synthetic or natural uh, micronized now we are dealing with the natural micronized progesterone so in the early period from the luteal phase till around 8 to 10 weeks of the pregnancy the period during which the intervention is likely to be successful once it is started almost it has to be given till the 20 weeks now sometimes nowadays it is given even in the third trimester also it is continuing so for the early pregnancy once if you start the progesterone it has to be continued till the 20 weeks next slide please so now coming to this progesterone what is the natural progesterone as uh, previously neeta was telling it is obtained from the compounds derived from the soya beans and the yam roots once it is becoming micronized that is micronized to process designed because it increases the half life of the progesterone and reduces the destruction to the gastrointestinal tract and similarly the micronized to process the size of particles is also reduced and the effect of the progesterone will be increased so the side effects will also be reduced so if the natural progesterone is micronized and the absorption is good and the side effect is also is reduced and the flexibility of administration as we told all types of some patients will be comfortable with oral progesterone some may not be comfortable to take the oral progesterone mostly in the ivf centers in the art procedure they advise go with the vaginal progesterone if they are not able to go if they are not comfortable with taking the vaginal progesterone also now we have the sustained release that is 24 hours every single tablet per day can be given and the injection form is also able to be yeah, now it is available so this micronized progesterone whichever form the patient is comfortable the, the counseling has to be done and it has to be started next slide please so of all the roots which we prefer most of the gynecologists they prefer with the vaginal roots especially with the arts they go with the vaginal root why the vaginal root is selected because it has the uterine uh, first pass effect uh, that is the high endometrial progesterone concentration compared to the oral and the intramuscular injection so the vaginal root only one problem is we have to counsel the patient how it has to be inserted that is the sometimes patient may not be once they start introducing uh, you know keeping the tablets through the vagina they are also very comfortable and they can be very very easily absorbed also 
So this um, what uh, parallel is is the most effective option vaginal compared to the oral. Vaginal root absorption is better, and the effective uh, is is also better, and it has the higher local bioavailability. Vaginal progesterones nowadays it can be given very easily in around about 400 milligram. It is used orally. We are giving. 20 to 30 milligram for vaginally 400 microgram can be used due to the higher local and better systemic absorption fewer side effects so normally with the progesterone what we are going to have a headache giddiness like that only from the vaginal root this normal side effect is also little uh, reduced so the vaginal root is the best route and it has to be counseled to the patients if they are not comfortable, we can go with the, now the, we have that uh, micronized progesterone of ESR, which is uh, taken one tablet per day. That can also be uh, advised. Uh, I have never used the intramuscular injections, but it can be also used. Uh, see the progesterone, where are all we are using in the early uh, pregnancies. Uh, the miscarriage, normally the abortions, which happens in the early stage, which is less than 12 weeks, 20 weeks. Uh, in that cases, we are if the patient is having the previous abortions, uh, then we are going to start with the micronized progesterone and the uh, uh, the recurrent pregnancy loss, the first one pregnant and loss after 12 weeks and another pregnancy loss at eight weeks means normally we don't wait. Previously, we used to define the recurrent pregnancy loss means two uh, abortions has been happened. And nowadays, if it is a one pregnancy loss itself, that itself is a loss for the patient. And even in the case of the IVF and all, it, we are very, very particular. So the uh, progesterones can be used for the miscarriages cases of the previous cases and the recurrent pregnancy loss and for the the ART procedures, whenever they go for IVF procedures and IUI procedures. In some cases where we think that the normal age is also little broader, the progesterone which is secreted is not sufficient. In that cases, as a supplementary, we can give. So it is better to go with the um, uh, progesterone in the early pregnancy, almost for most of the cases, not for all cases, for most of the cases. Next slide. Preferably threatened miscarriage if the patient is telling she is pregnant and she is having the bleeding and the horse is, uh, baby is good and slight spotting is present where we advise the patient to go for a rest that is the threatened miscarriage. In that cases we are going to start. So the recurrent miscarriage and the threatened miscarriage and the RPL and IVF cases we are going to start the progesterone. So the etiology what we are going to say the maternal factors and the fetal factors where the recurrent pregnancy loss, the maternal age, this we know, infections, lifestyle modifications, environmental factors where they are having the uh, history of uh, where with a high heat atmosphere in that cases and the fetal factors, uh, chromosomal abnormality, these are all the causes for the recurrent pregnancy loss. So if you suspect that the patient is for the recurrent, uh, already she had one loss, better to start the progesterone which with the, has the no side effects. Next slide please. Next slide. So the threat and miscarriage already I have told if the patient is having the uh, slight spotting and there is a um, uh, Whenever the patient comes with history of amenorrhea and the bleeding, as soon as we go with the ultrasound only, ultrasound whether we will see the size is corresponding and the sac is corresponding to the LMP and the FH is present and only bleeding is present, means in that cases we can ask the patient to counsel to take rest and start with the progesterone. When we think of the starting the progesterone, the natural micronasal progesterone effect will be little higher compared to the other progesterone. Sir. Next slide, please. So these are all the evidences. The Cochrane Library, which tells us the progesterones are probably effective in the treatment of threat and miscarriage, but may have little or no effect in the rate of the preterm birth. So this, there are a lot of studies which tells that a progesterone, if it do also, there is. But many studies I have been seeing, with all the studies which tells us threat and miscarriage, it is better, to, the incidence will be reduced and the pregnancy will be continued with the use of the micronized progesterone. Next slide, please. So the, these are all the guidelines, nice guidelines and the Chinese guidelines, which all the guidelines, which what they tell, the supplementations of the progesterone in the first trimester is very, very essential. Even in the second trimester, when we are going for the encyclage also, with the encyclage cases, this progesterone ca can be added. I am restricting myself only to the uh, first trimester. So as per all these guidelines, the Foxy position statement also, which is, which was created with the Nandita Balchak period, in that also they tell that the progesterone, micronized the progesterone has to be started from the earlier stage and it has to be continued till the 20 weeks. That is the OM retrieval state. From there we have to start and it has to be continued till 20 weeks. Next slide, please. This recurrent pregnancy loss, this we have to explain. Next slide, please. So etiology, recurrent pregnancy causes, what are all the causes which we have been discussing? So if you think this patient with this causes, maternal and fetal factors, if she will go for the abortions in that cases also, 
without uh, going for a single abortion also we can start the progest transfer so nowadays a single abortion is also very very important so with the high risk cases you start with the progesterone next slide please next slide please so as i told no 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 previous slide immunity factor so the next uh, the luteal uh, recurrent pregnancy lessens the immunity factor if the progesterone itself it uh, modulates the immune response of mother to prevent the rejection of the embryo so suppose if the implantation is happened and if it is rejected and it is coming out so in this cases uh, for the immunity factors to go uh, the following the implantation progesterone supports as an anti inflammatory state and progesterone supplementation is very very useful for supporting the maternal immune adaptation during the pregnancy so for an rpl cases it is a must next slide so the progesterone role this mm -hmm. is the mechanism which i have seen allogenic immune reaction which in turn produces that is the progesterone induced gene in lymphocytes this is the way the sufficient maternal progesterone induces the pipaf that prevents the immune rejections of the embryo and finally preventing the abortion so the progesterone role is is to preventing the pipb pf next slide please so as i told the natural micronized progesterone though we have the oral route rectal route injections the vaginal route is better so the micronized progesterone which improves the recurrent pregnancy loss in that cases you go with the natural micronized progesterone with the vaginal dose which is around uh, so 400 mg per day it can be continued from the day of the oocyte retrieval up to the 20 weeks next slide please so the um, micronized progesterone there are a lot of studies which studies you may be knowing the promise studies and the uh, prism studies this will be coming in the latest with all the uh, compared with a group with the uh, vaginal progesterone and a group without the progesterone the group which had the vaginal progesterone the success rate is very very uh, increased next slide please as compared to the as i told the oral and the vaginal oral supplementation implantation rate is 10 by 93 but in the case of vaginal it is 28 cases the pregnancy rate is also increased miscarriage is reduced and ongoing pregnancy rate will also be increased that is 14 by 34 in case of the embryo transfer next slide please this promise trial cure the vaginal study was um, uh, the, there were multinational uh, in the central uh, study was conducted in this 400 mg of micronized progesterone mm -hmm. was taken daily twice daily up till 20 12 weeks with this the control group the group with the vaginal progesterone the results were good next slide please there is another one study which tells the prism uh, prism study in this the spontaneous miscarriage in this cases instead of 12 weeks it was continued up to the 16 weeks so with the both this promise and the prism trial it proves that the prom uh, vaginal progesterone is very very useful that to after the art that is after the oocyte retrieval the progesterone if it is given the success rate will be better next slide next slide please next slide ma the same so what is the prism study has done the go to the previous slide no one minute the prism study they have continued up to the 16 weeks and the same message was given to the nice that is with the nice guidelines they tell the same the natural vaginal progesterone can be continued up to the 16 weeks so that is from the prism trial of study the nice guidelines can be uh, was formed so the promise trial and the prism trial confirms that vaginal progesterone is useful during the case of the early pregnancy and in the case of uh, ivf cycles also after the oocyte retrieval you can start with the progesterone next slide please so for luteal phase support that is in the case of the art to improve the implantations and the pregnancy rates we have to go with the progesterone next slide please so the guidelines that is the nice guidelines and the shrek guidelines as all for these are all the guidelines which tells the same fact that the natural vaginal uh, micronized uh, vaginal uh, vaginal micronized progesterone natural will be the better effect and it has to be used up to 12 to 6 or 16 weeks is the all guidelines which tells next slide please this is a which can be used for the bad obstetric history and the luteal phase insufficiency where the patients were not comfortable with the vaginal progesterone this sr can be given as i told it is a one tablet per day it can be continued 24 hours next slide please 
So the conclusion is the progesterone plays a crucial role to maintain pregnancy preparation of the endometrium for implantation, decreases the contractility of uterine smooth muscle, and the regulations of the cellular immunity and mediates uterine blood flow, as well as uterine endothelial adoption for the pregnancy. Then this micronized progesterone is, has a better effect than the normal progesterone. And the micronized vaginal progesterone is, uh, will have the better effects compared to the other effects. The side effect is also very less with the micronized vaginal progesterone. Next slide, please. That's all I think. The vaginal root provides numerous advantages like uterine first bite force effect and the little side effects and full secretory transformation with a lower dose. And the IVF practitioners, they have the better result with the vaginal micronized progesterone. Thank you. Once again, I thank the organizer for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, madam. It was a wonderful talk. Uh, it is always a pleasure to listen to you, ma'am. You have such vast clinical knowledge and academic knowledge as well. I think progesterone has always been controversial, but now, according to the latest studies, even NICE has said that progesterone, micronized progesterone definitely has a role. And after today's lecture, I am sure every one of us, the panelists as well as the audience, must have been benefited from this. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was a wonderful talk. Yes, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sampat, for giving your precious time. I know you have very minute to minute, you are busy. And uh, really, it was uh, nice to uh, know the this NMP because uh, we know when we should not use NMP, actually. That is a most uh, that uh, important question. So uh, that means pregnancy means NMP. Eden, definitely. <laughs> thank you, Archana. Thank, thank you, ma'am, for such an enlightening session and imparting so much knowledge. Uh, starting with the next session with Dr. Professor Gangada Sahu, a renowned learned speaker, asked, hello, Dr. Friend, learn to say no. Saying no is never an easy thing to do. An unhappy patient can potentially pose a serious threat to your practice. He can make a claim against you, drying up your resources and causing a lot of stress. But still, an unsatisfied patient can also seriously damage the reputation you work so hard to build by leaving negative reviews. Patient selection is very important. Always be honest to your patient going through with the procedure. It would be a frustrating experience for both patient and practitioner because it would involve spending time, money, and effort. Second, educate your patient why your goal is not achievable. There would be a better alternative. Third, be gentle and empathetic that you would recommend a referral to a better center. The care person for this session are Dr. Deepshika Goyal, Dr. Niharika Malut. Dr. Deepshika, please introduce the eminent speaker. Please. Good evening, everybody. Professor Gangadhar Sahu is President ISOPERG 2022 and 23. He is retired professor and HOD of Gaini, VSS Medical College, Burla. He is Dean IMS and SUM Hospital and Pro VC SOA. And his dream is to be a ladder of success for others to climb up. An ordinary man surrounded by extraordinary friends and well-wishers. Now, welcome, sir, for your talk. Thank you, madam. My namaskar to all of you. Blessings from Lord Zagannath. Greetings from my family and I support I heartily thank the organizers, particularly Archana Burma Madam and Nita Sarma Madam for inviting me and asking me to give a talk, particularly on public demand, this talk that is how to say no, dear doctor friends. So shall I share the slides? Ah, yes, please share. <clears throat> so 
this is the blessings from Lord Jagannath, Baba Lingaraj, Surya Dev, and Master Maleshwari. Yes, next. The main object of teaching is not to give explanations, but to knock at the doors of the minds of the people. So that means it is not just explanation. I will give something which will be a food for thought of everybody. Next, please. So for this topic, no. Actually, it is the choice of Archana Madam who requested me to go on this uh, delivery talk on this. Next, please. So while coming to this topic, I just saw one of the obstetricians in the OPD attending a phone call from a patient. Over phone, he was advising her that you have to take this medicine after your dinner. Then the patient replied, will you please repeat that medicine, sir? And he said this. And when he asked, she asked again, he tried to explain this medicine just like, say, uh, anything, any iron preparation, <clears throat> preparation, he started with this. Suppose he is prescribing a medicine. And he started with this medicine starts with M, M for monkey, then A, A for say uh, anything you can say, X, then so and so forth. So this is the way that we, the obstetricians and doctors are also habituated to do this. Please don't advise over phone. So that is very, very risky one. That is first. Then why Archana Sarma died on 30th March 2022 in Dausa, Rajasthan after committing suicide? He, conduct, he conducted a delivery. There was postpartum hemorrhage, could not be controlled. And she was psychologically so weak that she could not withstand the pressure from the public, from the police, from the administration and committed suicide. She should have said, no, it is not my fault. I can stand whatever will come on my way. I have done my duty. So have yourself respect, my dear doctor friends. On such situations, you gather strength, courage, and patience, and try to do not succumb to those situations. Next, please. So try to say no to avoid it. Next, please. Then in the present, because recently there was a murder on the evening and minor girl was stabbed to death by a person, her boyfriend. I asked to change slides. So many persons were going by, but they could not say anything. Therefore, to quote great Napoleon, the world suffers a lot, not because the violence of the bad people like that person, but the silence of good people. There are many people, but they could not have the courage to prevent it. So we have to oppose it. <laughs> Some way or other, we have to raise our voice, say no to all these activities. Next, please. Next. Next. So these are my mentors and teachers who have advised me to talk, I mean, frame this topic on no, I cannot forget them. So I pay my tribute to all those stalwarts who has helped me to, to organize this or arrange this talk in different ways. So this is the picture where with my mentor Sindhu Nandini Tripathi, 
in a national conference of at hyderabad my talk was awarded as the best presentation and i was receiving the prize mm. so my hats off to all my teachers my seniors my parents and well wishers next then why no so i have uh, designed my talk in such a way that i will try to analyze starting from mythology from the history from the society then from the medical fraternity what is the value of no and when and how you should tell no next please now coming to mythology next so we have seen that my the first no was told by arjun to sri krishna nachasyo anupasyami hatta soja nama hove na kankhe vijayam krishna na cha rajyam sukha nicha when arjun was asked requested sri krishna to take my chariot and place it in between the two warring groups i want to see who have come for this war to fight against each other then when he saw then on both sides there all of them are their relatives their friends brothers son and teachers guru everybody pitamah so and so forth then he said no i cannot fight that is the first incidents when somebody can say to god that no i cannot fight why I cannot see anything which I can be benefited by killing my own relatives. I do not need that victory, nor I need that kingdom. Next, please. Therefore, in, true, in due time, you have to say no. Again, in that Dapar Juga, in Kuru Sabha, when Draupadi was being assaulted by the Kauravas, mainly Durjodhan and Dushasan. There were all the big warriors, big heroes sitting down there. Pitama Bhishma was there. Dronacharya Guru was there, but did not say no, that cannot be done. Had they said no, then Mahabharata could have been avoided. Only to their her rescue, came Sri Krishna. Next, please. So therefore, you have to raise your voice. So in Trataya Juga, particularly this Maya Mirigo, when the beautiful deer came to the, in front, danced in front of the cottage, where in the exile, Ram and Sita and Lakshman were living, Sita said that I want that beautiful deer to Rama. But Rama could not say no. Had she said no, that no, it is not the deer original, it is in disguise, then a great war that is Ramayana could have been avoided. Next, please. And in the next moment, when Ravana came in disguise of a saint and asked for Vikya from Sita, and there was a Lakshman Rekha drawn by Lakshman that you should not cross it. You should not cross it there, but due to pressure of conscience, Sita crossed and could not say no. So she was kidnapped. Had she said no, then Ramayana could have been avoided. Next, please. Then at the death of Ravan, Rama sent Lakshman go and meet. Ravan is a great personality. He is a learned person. He has actually he knows what is good, what is bad, and take the good advices from him. So when Lakshman reached Ravan, Ravan said Lakshman three things, which starts with no. Do not delay any auspicious work. Because any delay lead to dissipation of energy and resources. Second, do not underestimate your enemies because every competitor is a potential winner. Third, 
do not share your life secrets because disclosure of trade secrets will ruin your achievements and your progress next please therefore these are the three learnings which is very important that you should not do all these three things in your life next in the history next one i will just give three examples when alexander the great at the age of 32 he died of some of mysterious disease then before death he called his commanders and ordered them that you have to follow these three things once i die and my dead body is carried to the grave site first the best of the best doctors will carry my coffin why because being the best of the best of the best doctors they could not identify or diagnose the disease so that i am dead second i desire that when my coffin is being carried to the grave the path leading to the grave had to be filled with all the wealth i have collected and looted during my career that means these these what mines of wealth that could not come to rescue me that is of no value third my hands should be let loose and that should hang outside while my coffin is being carried that means i had come empty handed i am going empty handed so nothing could save me next one so this story about bruce and the of scotland who fought a battle against the king of england six times he lost the battle then on the seventh time when he tried again going to be, he was going to be defeated so he went away and he hid inside the cave in a deep jungle there he saw a spider was knitting the net the spider was going from one corner to another and it was falling in the middle could not complete again second time tried third time fourth time in that way six times and on the seventh time he could be successful he could be successful so that this king need get the god the courage and the lesson from the spider that failure is the pillar of success if you will try not once twice don't lose patience so have patience then you can win on the next time so on the seventh time the mm. result was different mm. next and he won the battle and about this history you must have known that Prithira Chauhan, out of mercy and kindness, could left Muhammad Ghori when he was defeated and he was imprisoned. And when Ghori said that, "Please leave me. I won't come to your kingdom again," so that was the mistake or blunder he had committed. So in that, Hari said no. then india could not have gone to the foreign hands next please now coming to the present scenario what we are facing in our day to day practice next so this is a beautiful photograph where the young child is praying the grandfather is asking her what are you praying for beta ask the grandpa oh god please take away my mom's smartphone was her reply so this smartphone is now going to ruin the society this starting from the students even the newborn baby up to the senior citizens so they have got no time to leave this smartphone so therefore it is high time to say no to the smartphone to say the relationship between person and person between the part members of the society so in our fraternity doctor patient doctor doctor so that we can live a happy 
family life. Next, please. So once I was when the dean IMS in some hospital, a group of heads of the departments they came to my office, and they had a complaint against me. So unanimously they said that the students are not answering anything in the viva examination. When they were asking to the students, what is the reason? Have you not read anything? So what should be done? Then they said that the dean has taught us not to answer. Why? So because there was a photograph in my office where it was written, silence is not empty, it is full of answers. So the students were telling that dean has displayed that, therefore, we are not answering, we are remaining silent, and you have to extract the answers from our silence. So that is the pity of this. Next, please. So what is the social values of the no? So that in the society also, starting from the our small family to our society, to the larger society, to the country itself, we have, can understand the value of no. Next, please. Next, please. In childhood, don't suppress a young brain or the young child. So let him be free. Don't be, don't tax the child. Unlike the modern day parents who dream, every parents they dream that their child will be the champion, will be the topper. So that pressure ruins the child. Say no to it. Next. So in love and war, no means yes, it is proved. If China says, or gives a statement that we are not going to have war with our neighbors. That means he is definitely planning for a war. In love, if a boy proposes to a girl, the first reply, if comes no, then take it granted that it is yes. So why? Because you have seen in the film, Bol Radha Bol Sangam Hoga ki nahi. Nahi, 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 at last hoga. So therefore, this is the psychology of the things related to love. Next, please. So in marriage, a punch famous advice to a man about to get married, don't, don't get married. Next, please, why? Because marriage is an agreement in which a man loses his bachelor's degree and the woman gains her master's degree. She becomes a master, but you lost your bachelor degree. Next. So by all means, you may marry. Socrates quote, if you get a good spouse, you will become happy. But if you get a bad one, you are not loser you will become a philosopher. So therefore, there is no harm in marrying. Next, please. So value of no is invaluable many a time. Next. Next, please. Yes. So where you should say no? Murkha ko jabab mat do. Gyani ko thukurao mat. Achse ko Jane mat do or bure ko apnao mat. Said no to all these situations. Next, please. Next, please. Next, please. Yes. It takes around two years to learn to speak, but it takes a lifetime to learn what not to speak and when not to speak and when to say no. It will take your lifelong experience to say when to say no, how to say no, and to whom to say no. Next, please. Next, please. Yes. This is the beautiful commanding voice of Winston Churchill. Never give in, 
never give in, never, never, never. Never yield to force, never yield to apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. If you bend down, you, will, you are lost. Even if you are beaten out, you are traumatized, you are injured, still then keep your head high. At last you will win. Say no to such pressures. Next, please. Yes, what Mahatma Gandhi said, a no uttered from the deepest conviction is better than yes, merely uttered to please or host to avoid a trouble in our day-to-day -day affairs. You will find so many flatterers, they will come to you. You ask anybody anything, particularly the politicians, they will say, never say no. Yes, it will be done. So therefore, if it is no uttered from the deepest conviction, it is far, far better than Buddha. Yes. Next, please. Next, please. Yes. A man is great not because he has not failed. A man is great because failure has not stopped him. He has got ability. He has got power to rise from the failure. Next, please. Next, please. Next, please. Never show your weakness to the world. Because the world is much interested to play with it. If you think that I am too much gentle, too much a sober man, I can tell my weakness others. I can draw sympathy or empathy from everybody, but no, they will make a mockery of it. So never express or disclose your weakness before others. Say no to it. Next. Learning to ignore things is one of the greatest paths to inner peace. How much you ignore, that is more important than how much you try to learn. So dear friends, if you ignore 60% of things, if you accept 40%, that 40% will come as gems. That will help you to grow. Next, please. Next, please. Yes. The best words are no was told by Einstein. I am thankful to all those who said no to me. It is because of them I did it myself. So it is a blessing in disguise. Next. Next, I will come to our medical practice. Some negative practices, they give dividends at the long run because obstetrics has taught us for wait and watch. Don't be aggressive so that your result will be better. In breach delivery, our teacher of teachers have taught us generation after generation. So we are also teaching. Now breach delivery is a rarity. Once in a blue moon, you can see it. So masterly inactivity, just wait and wait. Wait till the umbilicus is delivered, then see the umbilical cord pulsation and looseness of the cord. Then wait for the angle of the scapula is visible, then see for the limbs around the chest or anywhere. Then once the hairline is visible, then go for delivery of the after coming head of the bridge. So that is masterly inactivity. It Paid dividends. Next, please. So, particularly in today's scenario, our uh, we have almost forgotten the art of obstetrics, the art of gynecology, and the art of medicine. That is the healing touch. That healing touch phrase is now out of syllabus. Before touching the patient, we are listening the complaints and advising them, go and come with the ultrasound report. Somebody comes with 12 weeks pregnancy with pain abdomen. Without examining, let us come with the report, then we'll see. No, that should not be. So do not be overconfident on technology because the great man like Albert Einstein has said, I fear the day that technology will surpass our human interaction. The world will have a generation of idiots. 
then once you are going to be a doctor without touching patients only re reading the books journals and your through the computer then seeing the investigation reports then you will not be a doctor you will be a butcher next please and if by chance everybody having a ultrasound machine is a sonologist everybody owning a scope is an endoscopist so if that is the scenario of this age the advanced technology in the hands of an untrained person is more dangerous than a loaded gun in the hands of a mad monkey therefore that will be so don't be over dependent on technology have your analyze your knowledge analyze what you have read in your theoretical classes apply it in practical field examine the patient listen to the complaints have the patients to listen to the complaints then after listening detail examination then advise the minimum specific investigations required not that the catalog of investigations what is written in the book that is not our professional ethics that have told us next please try to say no do not neglect minor ailments just over phone in the mid of the night you advised her a pregnant lady missed period 8 weeks pain abdomen you just advised her any general analgesic and antispasmodic and a breast don't do that that might be a case of ruptured ectopic pregnancy you do not know so therefore any ailment is serious that should be motto unless otherwise proved as in general medicine simple epigastric pain may be a symptom of cardiac pathology similarly in our obstetrics pain anywhere in the lower abdomen right or left iliac fossa with pregnancy keep in mind at least keep in mind that it may be something else you examine and then tell that no pathology is detected have the investigations next please then in professionalism what you should do already i have given an example avoid advising over phone next please similarly there are many things which we should avoid usually doctors and dogs they cannot unite it is said doctors particularly two gynecologists they never can be of same opinion in majority of the cases they will always fight two gynecologists and that to their both are ladies or both are gents they only fight more so therefore this professional rivalry is very very poisonous in different polished way that rivalry comes for example suppose a patient came from archana madam to me and told that archana madam has examined me she advised so and so many things but i heard that you are the great person and great physician you can do that do this so don't listen to those flattering words whatever she is telling he is telling and you also don't tell that oh, oh sorry he has prescribed this thing had i been in her place i could have prescribed the other thing the same tablet from different company so this is called professional liability so that should be avoided next next please do not be over confident because over confidence is one of the major causes of all complications in surgery particularly so if you are over confident then you are definitely like to miss so mind your friends be confident have your self confidence but don't say that i can bring moon from the sky that is never next please do not speak and listen to ill of your colleagues already i have said neither you listen nor you speak if anybody tries to speak then ask him what for he is telling these things what advantage he or she will get 
what advantage I will get? I love it. So that is um, your professional relationship. Next, please. Do not entertain flatterers. Already I have told. Next, please. It takes five years to learn how to operate, but it takes 25 years more to learn when not to operate and what not to operate. To do a cesarean section, anybody can, an APG can, but if you are a ethical and ethical practitioner, a master, if you say no, cesarean section is not required, I will give a trial for vaginal birth, then there is the credit. So it is told that when not to operate is more important. Next, please. Never give assurance. It, an important say, VIP person, moneyed person came to Nita Madam in Hapur. Madam, you are the best of I have heard. Now my daughter is, I have already uh, brought my daughter from Saudi Arab. He is now staying with me because I have heard your name. So, but I don't care for money. Anywhere you can conduct the delivery or cesarean, you can do it. But can everything be safe? Will my daughter will have a safe delivery? So if you are flattered, you will say yes. But if you are ethical, say no. In 99.9% .9 cases, from examination point, examining your daughter, I found that everything is normal but I cannot guarantee a safe delivery. So that much you have to say. In 0.001%, it may go abnormal because obstetrics is unpredictable. If still she pressurizes, then you say there is one hospital ah. which can give assurance to you. 100% assurance. I am giving this address. You take it and go there. What is that? Give me that address and phone number. That is the divine hospital. Place is heaven. Phone number is 777777. You can call and go there. Full assurance, you can get it. Next, please. So in any situation, don't say that I will cure it. Don't say that I can take the responsibility with and we will give you 100% result. So have something for your defense. So therefore, never give full assurance to anybody, even if it is a very simple case. Then coming to in medical practice, when to say no. Next, please. So you should not make delay in attending emergency cases. You are watching a very exciting cricket match between India and Pakistan. Last over is there. Then you got a call from the labor room. Madam or sir, there is the after delivery that third gravida patient is having severe postpartum hemorrhage. Then you said, let me wait. The last over is been two to three minutes, I will go. When the RS reached the labor room, after three minutes, he found that the mother is being attended by a group of interns and postgraduate students and cardiac message is going on. So don't neglect. So when, once you get a call, particularly the senior most who is there on duty should attend it. By attending that case, we almost solve 80% of litigations. If you do not attend, so many problems will come out. Next, please. Never show undue favor to any case. Suppose a girl, I mean, your friend has come with her daughter, that the daughter has got one child, two years, now she is carrying eight weeks of pregnancy. So she wanted that in the same sitting, the evacuation or the termination of the pregnancy should be done and she can take the flight next day. Straight say no. Don't show favor by doing it. 
in the OPD with suction evacuation. In such a case, I had encountered. So somehow a doctor friend came with such a patient. When I did the evacuation, after within one to two minutes, the patient was pulseless. I was fortunate that OT was going on. Then I shifted the patient simply, almost manually lifted the patient to the OT and opened it so that there was the rupture of the left uterine artery through perforation. And to my good luck, that perforation was concealed by the patient, which was being attempted by another hospital in the periphery. Therefore, do not show undue favor to anybody. Patient is patient. So all protocols should be followed. Don't miss it. VIP patient said, I'm taking my wife tomorrow with the elective cesarean section. I will bring her in the early morning. Say no. You might have taken anything you do not know, but once you ask, she will take that. I have taken this, I have taken. He still says, no, I have not taken anything. But during anesthesia, if by chance general anesthesia is required, there is aspiration. So why are you to stand? So therefore, always follow the protocols. Next, please. So do not take responsibility when you are preoccupied, even if the closest of closest friends of yours is the patient. Suppose you are leave the headquarters and one of your colleagues or your close friends came that the expected date of delivery of his daughter or daughter-in-law is day after tomorrow. Then she requested that, Madam, you are leaving headquarters, operate it and go. Then say no. You can refer. Nita madam can refer that patient to Archana madam. Archana madam is better than me. She is there. I have got full confidence and faith in her. So she can operate. You can go with a free mind. But if you have operated and left for Delhi or somewhere, then if any complication occurs, who will stand for you? So therefore control yourself. This patient is not yours. Particularly patients are not our paternal properties, but we think so. So you leave it in a better hand and you can go happily. Next, please. Next. Never overdo. Suppose you are doing a clinics and you are, you have fixed that if I see or examine 25 cases from six to nine, it will be okay. Then if there is because of your name and fame, there's a long queue and you have your attendants, your staffs, your relatives say that, no, that patient has come from such a long distance, please examine her. That patient has with this problem, examine her. In that you went up to 11 o'clock in the night. So next day you'll be fatigued. You will commit mistakes. So therefore, dear friends, never overdo because there are other doctors also. You can refer them and say no to over pressure, which is being unduly you are accepting. You can easily say no. They can go to some other doctor. There is a story of a cobbler. I am not going to tell that because of constraints of the time, beautiful story. Next, please. No hurry to leave the OT or labor room if you are in charge. So never leave your operation theater if you are in charge of the operation theater or the patient before closure of the peritoneum, number one. You might have gone outside that your assistant is doing closing the peritoneum. And next moment, you may get a call that this patient having PPH, you have to run back. So again, you have to see peritoneum, you have to open it. Vaginally, you see that their PPH. Is there anything wrong in the abdomen? So that is one. If foreign body is left by chance and by suspicion or later on were diagnosed, you will feel guilty. Similarly, in labor room. So don't 
leave labor room unless the baby and the mother both are okay and then you examine and get satisfied that nothing is left inside the vagina and there is no postpartum hemorrhage uterus is retracted and baby is okay then you can leave it so don't be in a hurry have patience next please next please now dear friends these are few of so many cases where you can say no i have started with a small example of that is advising over phone i have given the social status of the doctors where you have to say no and most important is your professional rivalry so be ethical always to the patient you examine the patient don't over depend on the investigation modalities apply your common sense your clinical sense your healing touch first then you specifically advise these things few things that you have to remember you have to attend serious cases you have to attend emergency cases as early as possible once you get the call don't delay don't over assure or give assurance to any case because we are not 100% assured that this patient will be okay after our treatment similarly if you are preoccupied never take responsibility so therefore my dear friends if in the right time with right person i mean with right situation you boldly say no it is no harm for a few seconds you may repent why did i say no but that result what you will get that will give you thousand times more rewards than this next please next to conclude my dear friends learn to say no having the courage to say no to the little things in life to start with will give you the power to say yes to the bigger things therefore practice to learn to say no next please next please so these are the two statements every word is important before concluding if i read it please patient listen to me we are not everyone's cup of tea we doctors we gynecologists we obstetricians will never be also some people may laugh at the things we do which they do not understand some may mock us belittle us and will make us feel a lot less of a person but we must not carry the weight of their opinion in the end of the day it is our journey it is our struggle it is our story to tell we are not here for the purpose of pleasing everyone remember your divine purpose we must not dwell in a cage people have set for us let us keep focusing and working on ourselves next please working on our becoming and inspiring others and not matters how others see us next please so dear friends we are not a cup of tea of everybody let them judge us doesn't matter let them misunderstand you doesn't matter let them gossip about you that is their opinions they are not their, their opinions are not our problems you stay kind committed to love and free in your authenticity no matter what they do or say don't you doubt your worth or the beauty of your truth are you not are you not respecting yourself then believe that believe yourself and stand tall next please dear friends when you are in a obstetrician you are fighting all the odds many a time even if you say no you may be dragged to different i mean in scenarios where you may be put into trouble if you have got nobody to help then you surrender before lord jagannath and you say that you are my lord i have surrendered before you you have saved so many people 
you have said Draupadi from the Kuru Sabha, why not you will save me? Sarva Dharman Paritejya Mame Kam Saranang Braja Ong Tang Sarva Papebhyo Mukhi Sami Masucha Mukhi Sami Masucha Mukhi Sami Masucha Jai Jagannath. Heartiest uh, congratulations, Gangadhar sir, for today's wonderful oration. As all of us, we have to learn to balance the yes and no in our lives. And somehow we are seeing a lot of mental health issues which have been increasing and increasing. And this is also because we as individuals have stopped prioritizing ourselves. We are not setting boundaries in our life. And that's what Today, from this lecture, we all should take as a lesson that we should be prioritizing and balancing in life and not go in that rat race which is happening. Sir, you are an inspiration to all of us and today's practical take tips we'll be taking with us and, you know, going to practice daily. Thank you so much, sir. And sir, Dr. Gangadhar Sahu, I just want to say one word. I was really impressed when I saw Amitabh Bachchan movie where he said, no means no. So that, that important sentence was there, but you spoken much and much better than the, that uh, Bollywood actor and your teachings. I think uh, each and every word was uh, so inspiring and we all must remember, yes, Niharika, we should uh, try to prioritize and say and value ourselves. It, we are not uh, that cup of tea saying yes to each and everybody. Uh, that uh, that sort of things uh, just to please everybody you have to say your stand also thank you very much i am so pleased that you selected this uh, wonderful topic for your oration this is uh, something very good thank you sir thank you uh, thank you chairperson dr deepshika and dr niharika malhotra and thank you so much sir for choosing such a different topic we are lucky to have you as our advisor and mentor. And uh, Deepika, please show appreciation award for sir. Sir, from my side and from our Let's all, all join, all chairperson, everybody, please give a standing oration to our Dr. Gangadhar Sahu. The name speaks volume. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And now moving further, next topic is antenatal care the inverting paradigm by very young learned gynecologist and obstetrician dr shaila jamal throughout the world the frequency of antenatal visits progressively increases with advancing gestation and is recommended to be on a weekly basis from 36 weeks onward recent decades have been a trend of fetal and maternal investigation to the first trimester of pregnancy and most fetal chromosomal and structural anomalies can be diagnosed by the end of the first trimester of pregnancy. The chairperson of this session are Dr. Seema Vashne and Dr. Renu Bansal. Dr. Seema Vashne, Secretary West UP Chapter I Super, Chairperson GOF 2021 and 22, past President GOF 2019, past Secretary GOF. Received Wonder Woman Foxin Award 2019, Joint Secretary UPCOG, past Joint Treasurer Gov, received Best Sports Woman IMA Gazibar 2021, received Second Best Lady Doctor UP IMA, Yoga Coordinator IMA Gazibar, her special field of interest in high risk pregnancy and infertility. Uh, second uh, Chairperson Dr. Renu Bansal. She is consultant and uh, director of Ashirvad Nursing Home, and she is practicing for the last 26 years in Hapur. And she is joint secretary of West UP chapter I Super, and she is at present the treasurer of Hapur Obstetric Guidance Society. Very active member. Uh, Dr. Renu Mansal, please Thank you, give kind introduction of the Thank you, ma'am, for the kind introduction. It's a great pleasure and honor to introduce Dr. Shaila Zaman, an exceptional individual who has not only excelled academically, but has also made a significant impact on our community. Today, she will be sharing her insights on antenatal care 
the inverting paradigm. Her deep understanding and unique perspective on this topic will leave us enlightened and inspired. Dr. Sahela Zamal, she is Secretary West UP Chapter I Super. She is Associate Professor in RMRI Bareilly, Founder and President of Society of Menstrual Disorders and Hygiene Management. She is Joint Secretary Ginox, Chief Editor Journal of Reproductive and Menstrual Sciences. She is Social Activist, Activist and Writer. She is North Zone in charge of YTP Foxy, Coordinator Endocrinology Committee, Member IEEC, Breast Committee Foxy, and Core Committee Member RNTEP. She has been studied with many awards like Foxy Leaders of Tomorrow Award, Foxy PAC Award, Award of Honor by WHO, Award of Excellence in Menstrual Hygiene Promotion by Gramale and Ministry of Sanitation and Drinking Water. She has published 39, she has given 39 publications and chapters and contributed two chapters to Foxy Focus. She has organized many state level conferences and has won gold medal in PG and UPCOG. Welcome, Dr. Shaila Gamal. Thank you so much, ma'am. And thank you so much for those <clears throat> kind words. Uh, and uh, at the outset, I would like to thank Archana Verma, ma'am, for giving me this opportunity opportunity and for love and her blessings that she always pours on us. Uh, with that, I would also like to, uh, although he needs no appreciation, especially mine, but yes, as youngster, we were quite enthralled to listen to his speech. That was an eye-opener. We were always, you know, mesmerized by this particular poem, Topsy Turvy Land, where a poet uh, was imagining how the world would look like when we invert the things, right? So it read somewhat like that, the people walk upon their heads, the sea is made of sand, the children go to school by night in Topsy Turvy Land. And the last part is, you pay for what you never get. And I would like to pay attention to this particular line, you pay for what you never get. I think it must be grand for when you go, you are coming back in Topsy Turvy Land. So this implies so well to this particular care of standard. Next slide, please. That we have inverted this 80 year old pyramid and this was shifted in 2011. Next slide, please. So this thing, the entire thing, the entire care perception on the part of receivers as well as givers was in what next slide please so the question was did it change our perspective or uh, next slide please dr deepika so because you know what uh, segments which which were so uh adherently believing that the care of pyramid that was in practice since the beginning of the century was good and now if we are inverting it are we changing anything so the answer is next slide please a big yes and that is 100 percent so why this change perception and this change in practice was required. We all know antenatal care is critical and through timely and appropriate evidence-based actions related to health promotion, disease prevention, screening and treatment, we are reducing complications from pregnancy and childbirth. We are reducing stillbirths and perinatal deaths and we are giving integrated care throughout the pregnancy. Next slide, please. Previously, the Four visit WHO ANC model, which was proposed, which we all were following, which gave its value and worth through the uh, multiple trials conducted by WHO. We all were firmly believing that we are delivering what, you, what we are supposed to. Next slide, please. This famous model involved a specific evidence-based intervention for all women. It was carried out at four critical times and was famously called as focused antenatal care model and was an important part of pregnancy, childbirth, postpartum and newborn care. Next slide, please. Being a teacher, I was 
uh, you know, so vehemently teaching my students that we have to remember if nothing, then this four visits proposed by WHO. But somehow in 2011, we found out that this model was able to uh, cater to the requirements of both low and high income settings where women were less satisfied with the reduced visit schedule and perceived the gap between the visits was too long. Next, please. please. There was unintended underutilization of the care. Next slide, please. Number of stillbirths and perinatal complications were not changing. Now we have to understand that on one part by this four visit model, we were trying to uh, you know extrapolate our care to reduce the stillbirths and perinatal complication. But on the other parts, we were missing out to such things which were in turn increasing again stillbirths and perinatal complication. So this was setting a vicious cycle. So there was a need to give quality throughout the continuum of care. WHO envisions a world where every pregnant woman and newborn receives quality care throughout the pregnancy, childbirth and postnatal period. So this four visit model was population centric, whereas person centric health and well-being was the need of the art because it is only when we are prioritizing persons, we are reducing mortality and morbidity. We are providing respectful care that takes into account a woman's views also, and we are optimizing service delivery within the health systems. Next, please. Next slide, please. So women's views, which were largely neglected in previous FN, FANC model of WHO, women want a positive pregnancy experience from antenatal care. That is when a healthy pregnancy for mother and baby will not be a dream. Physical and sociocultural normality will be established throughout the pregnancy. Effective transition to positive labor and birth experience, both for obstetricians and for mothers and positive motherhood, including maternal self-esteem, competence and autonomy, which requires our integrated approach. Next, please. So 2016 ANC guideline came, which included essential core package of antenatal care that all pregnant women and adolescent girls should receive. It gave the flexibility to employ different options based on the context of different countries. So it was not rigid that every country is following four visit protocol. This complemented existing WHO guidance on complications during pregnancy. But we had two important questions. One, what are the evidence based practices during antenatal care? that improved outcomes and lead to positive pregnancy experience. I mean, why do we need to change it? And if we need to change it, how these practices should be delivered. Next, please. This means that if we are employing this inverted care of pyramid, we are making early diagnosis of an employees, twins, gestational diabetes, mellitus, anemia, other disorders, RH incompatibility, and if we find anything which is problematic, then we can uh, offer termination of pregnancy also. This also means we are predicting FGR, preeclampsia, preterm birth earlier. This also means we are providing early interventions like low molecular weight heparin, ecosprin. We are giving them calcium, iron, folic acid. We are offering them circlage. Diet and exercise is also incorporated. And we are timely planning any external Catholic versions, placental localizations, induction of labors, and elective cesareans if need arises. Be. Next, please. So, recommendations on ANC were 49, which were grouped into five core topic areas. One was nutrition, second was maternal and fetal assessment, third was preventive measures, fourth was interventions for common physiological symptoms, and fifth was health systems interventions to improve the utilization and quality of care. Now, uh, this we all were doing since last 80 years also, but this was not grouped into interventions. It was on the whims and fancies of us as well as the pregnant ladies that we were providing this type of care. Next, please. So recommendation number one that goes for nutrition is very important because nutrition was not considered as an essential or core component of, on the part of care delivery system. 
So now the recommendation is for counseling about healthy eating and keeping physically active during pregnancy. We have to tell our pregnant patient about this. There, this goes without saying that we can even hand them over uh, info brochures or infographics. Second important thing is nutrition education on increasing daily energy and protein intake is also recommended to reduce the risk of low birth weight neonates. Further, balanced energy and protein dietary supplementation is recommended for pregnant women to reduce the risk of stillbirth and a small for gestational age neonates. But the most important part is in undernourished population, high protein supplementation is not at all recommended for pregnant women to improve maternal and perinatal outcomes. In fact, it has been seen that if we recommend high protein supplementation to these girls, chances of SGA are increasing more. Next, please. Daily iron and folic acid supplementation recommended. We all are doing that. Intermittent oral iron and folic acid supplementation within context specific areas where uh, higher doses of iron and folic acid are not either available or not acceptable or not tolerated to the patient, but we have to give it any, uh, and design it according to the needs and suitability of the population. Second is in population where low dietary calcium intake is there, daily calcium supplementation to the tune of 1.5 to 2 gram oral elemental calcium is recommended and it reduces the risk of preeclampsia as well. Vitamin A supplementation is only recommended for pregnant women in areas where vitamin A deficiency is a severe public health problem and it is given to prevent night blindness and not to all. Zinc supplementation is only and only recommended, please uh, go back to the slide, where uh, we are doing a research, otherwise not multiple micronutrient, B6, vitamin E and C and D are not routinely recommended. In fact, we have to tell our patient that daily caffeine intake during pregnancy, more than 300 milligram per day is associated with low birth weight and stillbirth. Next slide, please. Recommendation number two that goes for uh, maternal and fetal assessment. Uh, we have certain recommendation that is number one, diagnosing anemia. Again, we are doing that, but on-site hemoglobin testing with the hemoglobinometer is now uh, professed by all the bodies, especially WHO. Second is midstream urine culture is recommended method for diagnosing asymptomatic bacteria, and there is no MAFI for that. Third is clinical inquiry about possibility of intimate partner violence. Now, now this was not our routine. So we have to employ certain red flag signs or danger signs where we can assess and identify the patients who are at risk of IPV so that we take early interventions and give more care. Next, please. Hyperglycemia first detected anytime during pregnancy should be done on the first contact. Tobacco use, alcohol and other substance abuse, HIV, syphilis and tuberculosis should be screened. Now we all are screening HIV, syphilis, all said and done, but in a country like us where every sixth patient is suffering from tuberculosis, we are missing on to this diagnosis and the screening part of tuberculosis, which should be done in our clinics and documented also. Next, please. Recommendation number three, and that goes for preventive uh, aspects in the pregnancy. And it says that, please, next slide. Daily fetal movement counting, such as count to 10, is only recommended under the context of regress research. We don't have to, you know, routinely tell our patient that you do a daily fetal movement counting. But yes, awareness about fetal movements should always be told to the patient to get weeks that they should identify their pattern and report if they uh, notice any change in their pattern. Second is we don't do symphys uh, fundal height nowadays. We have to height for the assessment fetal growth and uh, it is but not then for to improve the perinatal outcomes. Uh, abdominal palpation or SFH measurement in a particular setting is not recommended nowadays because maternal obesity is increasing. We are employing ultrasound more. But if there is context specific, uh, you're doing some research, then we can do that. Routine antenatal cardiotography is not recommended. One ultrasound scan before 24 weeks, that is early ultrasound. and multiple pregnancies not be done. That is very important because we have seen 
uh, Doppler being employed for each and every low risk pregnancy also that that is not recommended and that is condemned. Next, please. When we talk of uh, uh, next slide, please. We are going back. Sorry. Yes. So recommendation for physiological changes during pregnancy. Next, please. Ginger, chamomile, vitamin B6, acupuncture are recommended for relief of nausea in early pregnancy. Advice on diet and lifestyle is recommended to prevent and relieve heartburn, leg cramps, pelvic pain, constipation, varicose veins, and edema. They all need attention and relief on the part of caregiver because earlier, even this was our practice also that this happens in pregnancy. There is no need for pregnancy. But now we have to give a special care to these uh, physiological problems during pregnancy also. Next, please. The recommendation for health systems, these are important. It is uh, uh, now uh, guided by WHO that a pregnant woman carries her own case notes during pregnancy to improve continuity, quality of care, and her pregnancy experience. Now, doctor switching is a common phenomenon now. They come to uh, new doctor's OPT with a new paper. And they, you know, mask their history, mask their previous antenatal care, anything that was done to them. So now they should be encouraged that we all are one. Whatever one doctor has seen and prescribed, we will like to see that and continue if all required. Then midwife led continuity of care model and group antenatal care is need of our for our country, especially because doctor ratio is so poor and we have to employ ASHAs and ANMs into the uh, healthcare delivery system more rigorously. Next, please. The implementation of community mobilization through facilitated participatory learning and action cycle with women group is important. Now we can make WhatsApp group, we can make communities on uh, Facebook and Instagrams to improve this quality of care and packages of intervention that include household and community mobilization and antenatal home visits. Although this is a far-fetched dream for India, but still we can do that. And community mobilization especially means mobilization of the immediate family of the patient from where the resistance is maximum. Next, please. Uh, task shifting, yes, because doctors are overburdened. So for uh, basic care and basic support, we can recruit and retain qualified health worker, both in rural and remote areas. Next, please. Antenatal care models with minimum of eight contacts are recommended to reduce perinatal mortality and improve women's experience of care. So after we have seen that we have to not routinely do Doppler, not routinely recommend all the vitamins and supplements and vitamin Ds and whatnot, we have to know that we have increased the number of visits to eight. And there is a difference between this thing. Next, please. So this is something new. Next, please. Antenatal care with minimum of now we don't call it visit, we call it contact. We uh, GDG recommendation WHO in 2016 very you know strongly said that we have to increase uh, uh, eight visits, eight contacts. We, otherwise, we are not going to decrease our perinatal deaths. Next, please. So earlier it was said that first visit should be between 8 to 12. Now it is up to 12 weeks. One visit is mandatory. In second trimester, it was said that visit number two should be planned at 24 to 26 weeks. Here we were missing 20 weeks for a period. So now contact two is at 20 weeks. And again, contact three is at 26 weeks. Third trimester, it was said that one visit at 32, then 36 to 38 weeks pick. Uh, one visit was good enough. Now it is 30, 34, 36, 38, and 40 weeks. If patient is delivered by then, good enough. But again, she has to return back if she has not yet delivered by 41 weeks. And that is an additional contact with the caregiver. The, we have to use the term contact as it implies an active connection between a pregnant woman and a healthcare provider that is not implicit in the word visit. Visit just means the patient just comes and says ki many apna hemoglobin bhi kara liya blood group bhi kara liya ek ultrasound bhi kara liya so that means she has visited a healthcare facility but she never shows you the prescription by an obstetrician who has recommended diet 
iron folic acid they they're just happy in visiting healthcare facility and not talking to any doctors to get any advices out of them so contact health facility this context is specific recommendations which which we have learned just now next please early ultrasound um, as we all know and we all are doing also first at 12 weeks and second at 20 weeks to rule out major congenital abnormalities because that's a big reason for preterm that's a big reason for perinatal complications and uh, stillbirths next please so positive pregnancy experience by this antenatal model is to provide pregnant women with respectful individualized person centered care at every contact with the implementation of effective clinical practices and provision of relevant and timely information psychosocial and emotional support by practitioners with good clinical and interpersonal skills within a well functioning health system bahut lambi definition hai but ye hame sabko yaad rakhni hai unless we are going to remember this we are not going to uh, imply this uh, next slide please we're not going to you know have this aim and dream of having a uh, healthy antenatal care reducing stillbirth rate reducing perinatal morbidity and mortalities next please so in the words of ban ki moon un secretary general who emphasizes on this particular aim to achieve the every woman every child vision and the global strategy for women children and adolescent health we need innovative evidence based approaches to antenatal care so i welcome these guidelines which aim to put the women at our uh, center of care enhancing their experience of pregnancy and ensuring that babies have the best possible start in life so what a line best possible start in life by delivering a good antenatal care and we have to respect profess and pro practice this inverted care of pyramid which is helping us to achieve our uh, fulfillments goals and desires thank you good evening everyone am i audible yes 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 first yes, of yes. all heartiest congratulation to organizers dr neeta dr deepshika and whole hapo team for conducting a very informative awesome and wonderful uh, webinar today and we are listening uh, we were listening uh, dr sampath kumari she has beautifully explained how we can uh, uh, choose the progestone especially and the ch choice of uh, progestone is uh, micronized progestone and uh, per vaginal is a very good and luteal phase and uh, um, for 12 or 16 weeks and uh, dr sahu sir amazing talk and uh, you are you are very right uh, saying yes is very easy and saying no is very very difficult to to say yes we should think twice or thrice ki we will we will be able to do we will able we will be able to do justice about what we are saying thank you so much sir for enlightening us and dr shehla inke liye kaha kya kaha jaye inke liye do do line zarur bolna chahungi maine chehre hazar dekhe hain adaye bhi beshumar dekhi hain सादगी तेरी जैसी पर कहीं नहीं देखी इतनी सादगी से ये पढ़ाती हैं और इतना अच्छा सोशल वर्क करती हैं और आज इन्होंने शी हेज ब्यूटीफुली एक्सप्लेन हाउ इन्वर्टेड पिरामिड ऑफ एंटीनेटल केयर कैन डू वंडर्स एंड दिस कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव एंटीनेटल केयर विल डेफिनेटली बेनिफिट ऑल द पेशेंट्स एंड ऑल्सो दे आर बेनिफिट फॉर अस ऑल्सो दे आर लिमिटिंग आवर विजिट्स and pro and the protocol of uh, doing ultra lesser ultrasound and uh, this will help in patients for their positive and uh, improved pregnancy outcome thank you so much i also want to say uh, that uh, the uh, all the things uh, uh, for making me and neeta decided that uh, let uh, people be aware of what is a difference in a public health goals and medical management so these two things are literally uh, so much interconnected but they are uh, uh, something different also 
and today's uh, webinar was totally on a preventive aspect and you know dr shehla especially the last one lecture is uh, our main aim is to give a happy and healthy family and uh, pregnancy and uh, of course for that we need to learn the quality antenatal care but before that obviously we need to know what is a simple simple common common steps and the what is updating getting on suppose humne 20 saal pehle koi antenatal care padha to abhi there is so many changes you know from a pyramid it became a inverted pyramid and then there is a one word also double arrow antenatal care so this window of opportunity which we get through in the prenatal period and the uh, during anc contact visits and this we need we will definitely take care among so many able to prevent the complication and we will also be happy and uh, uh, obviously when our patients are healthy and happy we are also healthy and happy so now thank you thank you chairperson thank you and thank you shaila thank you ma'am thank you thank nice. you chairperson thank you dr shaila jumar and it's the time to show appreciation award to dr shaila jumar and please accept this award of the shaila for delivering such a nice elaborated session and very nicely presented thank you ma'am this is uh, very nicely you made it <laughs> your design your testing uh, uh, for shaila I think Shaila is all-time favorite. I already said before also that Niharika really? and Shaila are <laughs> our best UP superstars, and we want to move forward with them also because uh, they are the future of Oxy also, Isopub also, and so many things. We uh, should never stop learning. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. speakers and the chairperson everything is superb thank you so much for patience listening and attending yes thank you for giving me thank you jackson pass sir want to and sir, special to thanks seema sir dr ganga sir thank you dr ganga sir want to say yes sir so i am waiting till the last to say a few words so first uh, sentence is thank you very much for inviting me to this beautiful login so i thank the chief guests guests of honor the chair persons the speakers wonderful speakers so uh, micronized progesterone the basics that i have learned in the antenatal care what a beautiful talk it is so Um, best of uh, knowledge number 1 best of uh, updating it and most most important is it is very easy to implement also if one keeps it in mind so uh, next thing is even this hot summer from 3 to 5 we are in the ac chambers still then i feel that nobody have felt any heat of this summer so it is so beautiful and about this uh, theme of this webinar happy and healthy pregnancy so yes we doctors can guarantee almost 90% to give a healthy pregnancy but happy is a word i think healthy is the physical aspect and happiness is a psych- psychological or mental aspect so that happiness to get it we have to trouble i mean uh, we have to work a lot to make the pregnancy or the outcome of pregnancy happy so it is a philosophical term rather so in some other day we can talk on this how we can make a pregnancy happy so therefore i wish everybody should be happy by attending this conference and the take home message is you should definitely be ethical on your practice try to practice at least to say no once a day so that we can do something for the society because the napoleon bonaparte's quotation is that 
the world suffers not because of the bad people, but for the good people who remain silent. So we have to open our mouth and say something, say oppose it where it is required. So that is one. So as an isoparpian, may I request those members who have not become the members of isopar to be the members of isopar and, and strengthen this association or organization. If Hapur has not, is not a chapter of ISOPOR, if it has got strength, may I request Madam to you to take the responsibility to initiate this so that gradually it can reach to the expectations of the people. So ISOPOR actually is growing as our dynamic secretary program told. So it needs wholehearted support, participation, cooperation of all the members and also non-members. So we were the twins, Gynecology Association and Isopurb Association. So definitely we will work together to march forward. Thank you once again for inviting me. I pray Lord Jagannath to bless you all. Long live Isopurb, long live Isopurb, long live Isopurb. Thank you, madam. Thank you so much, Dr. Arjuna Verma, ma'am, for organizing this program. Thank you, Deepika, madam, and Amit. Thank uh, you, Dr. Amit. Yes, for your cooperation and beautiful management that you have done. Thank so, you very much. We this program was brought you. to you by our Nari division of Jackson Pal, which is having these products. Diva Jest is our natural micronized progesterone. We have SR200 and SR300 tablets, Diva Jest SR200, SR300. And then we also have vaginal soft gel, Diva Jest 200. And we have the injection progesterone as Diva Jest 100 mg injection, Diva Jest 100 injection. So looking forward to your support to uh, Jackson Paul's progestin range because we are the progestin people having all types of progesterone, natural micronized progesterone, diprogesterone by the brand name Divatron. Uh, maintain is our hydroxyprogesterone, caparoid, allylestronol tablets of maintain 5 mg, also norethistron acetate 10 mg control release tablets, and plain norethistron acetate tablets of 5 mg. And of course, Endoreg, another product from Nari division, which is Dynogest 2 mg tablets for endometriosis and associated pain. So looking forward to the support from all of you for all the whole of the progestins basket that we offer. Thank you so much. And we hope to see you again in our webinars.